your oldest, you mentioned your boys, Drew, he's had kind of a challenging stretch here. He had the injury in training camp as he was preparing for his freshman year at William and Mary. Now, obviously, like every all other student athletes across the country, he's dealing with uncertainty right now. As you talk to him, as you talk to our student athletes, what kind of lens, what kind of perspective has it given you on, on what they're going through right now? Well, well to start with him, um, yeah, uh, Drew tore his ACL two weeks into his freshman year in, in football practice, and um, watching him going through that, seeing it through his lens has certainly made uh, me a better AD and, and, and better father. And um, I knew that our student athletes here were under great care. I know they, they get through it, um, but it certainly drew more attention to that for me. So I make more trips uh, when things were normal or return to normal to the training room and I try and call our young people that have surgeries and um, other things. So no, seeing it through the eyes of a student athlete was a great eye opener. It also taught me something, whether it's, uh, it taught me to take my own advice, but whether it's rehabbing a, a knee or getting through something like this, um, it's probably not the best analogy, but how, how do you eat an elephant, right? Like one bite at a time. So that 10 month knee rehab, getting through this, you can get overwhelmed looking too far ahead. So right now uh, we're planning ahead, but still just trying to have that strength for one day at a time. Well, wait, as concerned as I am for Drew, I actually find myself being more concerned for Brett uh, just because he's such a <laughs> yeah. social guy. Uh, yeah, yeah. How's he handling this? What's the uh, dynamic? I can't even imagine as a, as a high school yeah, student having yeah. yeah. taken yeah. away. Yeah, it's um, – shoot, love them all the same. It's uh, like permanent summer break. Thankfully, they can go outside a little bit. And um, there are some um, uh, many good things about being secluded a bit in Southwest Virginia. So at least they're able to get outside and do that. And I know my parenting has really hit an apex when they're playing video games against each other in different rooms and yelling at each other. That's when I know I've really become a parenting <laughs> success. But um Spending time with them is good. We've been really busy here. And then some of the Zoom calls with our head coaches, our student athlete advisory council, um, those have been great. I mean, just as you know, John, just seeing some people face to face and those interactions mean a lot more than they used to. Yeah, I was going to say just in walking along the sidewalks and trying to get some exercise, I've run into a few coaches, saw Briz the other day, ran into uh, Pete Moore a couple of days ago. It seems like they're all like the rest of us right now, just trying to figure it out, trying to, as competitive as they are, realizing that the circumstances have changed, but still trying to, to have a leg up. You know, how have you tried to guide them, specifically with their sports being different? You know, football is different than basketball sure. and softball. Um, the first thing I've tried to do is, is tell them the absolute truth. If I don't know the answer to something, I um, share that with them. And then we have been meeting – Oh, as coaches uh, every other day, but but more with the spring sport coaches, because you're right, they're the ones immediately impacted. Um, we know what the NCA has put out and made permissible, but now we're working through the position the ACC may take on that or Virginia Tech. So coaches are in limbo. Some of our student athletes are, and I hate that for them. Um, but it's, it's broader than just athletics, right? It's a university issue. It's a health issue. It's an economic crisis. And... Um, you know, seeing what Dr. Sands goes through and, and um, there's there's a lot going on and a lot of things to consider and hopefully we'll be through it sooner than later. Well, you've been in this business a long time. Um, I'm not going to age you and specify exactly how long that's been, but, uh, you know, I think we've all in our various roles seen, you know, oddities, right? We've seen cancellations for weather or we've seen travel complications or, you know, dismissals from programs, but clearly nothing as broad as this you know have you found yourself personally just trying to lean back on some of those uh experiences and, and piece them together in the broader response uh, yeah um yes although there's there's nothing that really could have prepared us for this but i, I have been doing it long enough to have gotten through 9 11 and the recession and and some other traumatic things um this one is obviously different you don't know the finality of it um the ebbs and flows of, of, of emotions out there. Um, but yeah, you try to lean on it and do it. What I don't particularly enjoy is having to react to things. I like to hopefully plan and get us ahead of things. And with all of this, we've just been backpedaling, reacting, and uh, that's not the healthiest mode to be in. But we still are now that the dust is settled, still pausing, looking ahead, trying to vision and um, realize that things will come back and we'll play ball again another day. 
yeah, you mentioned, you know, we just don't know where the finish line is or what the finish line looks like uh, and what's on the other side of it. But clearly, as things have continued to, in a domino-like fashion, be postponed, be canceled. We saw Wimbledon yesterday uh, canceled all the way into July. British Open is certainly being discussed right now. And naturally, uh, everyone wants to know about fall sports. Seemed kind of right. inconceivable when we just heard about this for the first time three weeks or a month ago. Uh, you know, what discussions are you guys having? Is it too early um, in terms of, of knowing what that'll look like? Uh, we have had some discussions and uh, Commissioner Swafford and the ACC have done a very nice job trying to work backwards from some certain dates. You know, if things are okay about this date, we can do this, X, Y, and Z. And everyone um, certainly wants to play fall sports if we're able and, and, and there's no denying the popularity and economic impact of football. So as soon as we can do it safely, we will. Um, we have not gotten into much about what if it potentially moves to the spring and how would you do football here or there, but it's um, it's just too early to tell on that, but there's a lot of conversations going on. You try not to spend a lot of time on doomsday scenario, because if, if, if you don't play football at all, um, it's going to be uh, a major problem. So we know that could happen, but we're not planning for the doomsday scenario yet. Um, if that happens, we're all in the same boat, and it's a, a mess to uh, our profession in higher education. Well, clearly yourself, Dr. Sands, you know, athletic directors, conference commissioners, you're all having to have these weighted conversations, even if you don't want to look at doomsday scenarios, certainly you're not right. going to get caught unprepared uh, by them. So if you're spending a portion of your day doing that, with, when you finally do let yourself get back to the house with the family, uh, what kind of activities are the Babcocks uh, partaking in to, to distract yourself, I guess, for a little bit? Yeah, yeah again, as I mentioned, being able to to get outside is nice. Um, yeah, our, our kids seem to manage. Um, but but when I go home, I um, I like to work outside. I'm not very handy in the house, but I like to cut wood or clear brush or <laughs> plant things, move them around. I like to get my hands dirty, and that calms my brain. I get to see uh, instant gratification and get my exercise that way. So we have a little bit of property, and I can go do that. So I think I can live off the land a little bit. But um, Kelly and I, you know, we, uh, we've been married a while. We watch TV together some. It's usually in the same general vicinity, different stuff. She really likes to solve crimes like uh, <laughs> special victims unit, CSI, unsolved mysteries. So she's a crime solver. And uh, I've gotten um, uh, pretty fluent at this new thing you might have heard of called Netflix. You know? And so I have now seen <laughs> <What's that? laughs> probably 12 to 15 movies in two weeks. That's probably more than I have in the last 20 years. But uh, we're making do. And again, it's that one day at a time mentality. If you let your brain drift too far out, um, it can be a bit depressing. So I know I'm talking out of both sides of my mouth. You got to plan ahead work-wise. But uh, in, in personal life and work, it can get, get a bit overwhelming if you let your mind go down too many rabbit holes. Yeah, and certainly it's hit uh, different areas quicker than others, of course, with restaurants being closed at the moment right. and bars and barber shops, as you can tell from my physical appearance right now. That's what I'm blaming it on uh, right now. That economic impact, though, I mean, it's being felt certainly at the large level with all of college athletics, but on a smaller scale with local businesses. You guys have made the decision. You pushed the giving deadline back to the end of April, which is now this month. Um, what's your message to, to donors and people that support Virginia Tech Athletics? Yeah, the um, first, uh, I should have mentioned earlier, message to our student athletes. I obviously uh, hate it for them. They're in the prime of their life in a, a short window of time, and hopefully we can recoup some of that for them and, um, and do that. So I don't mean to underestimate that. But yes, the... Um, the health impact is first and foremost, we all know that, but we're also in an economic crisis. So with our donors and ticket holders, um, if they are able to participate and jump in, we would love to have it. At the same time, we also realize people are stretched in a lot of areas and um, you know, we're, we're in this thing, we're hoping to have a football season, um, a, a reseeding, and we're so far down that line, I don't know that we will pull that back, but it will be interesting to see. And a lot of people will, will have to make some hard financial decisions, but if they're able to give uh, a little or a lot, we'd love to uh, have that because we survive and operate off that. And again, one day we'll be back uh, up and running and, and we'll be a rallying point for everybody. 
as far as the sponsors this year, we got through most of or all the basketball season and football. Um, some of our spring sports inventory uh, they did not receive, but hopefully this year all that went well. Um, but next year is a whole nother story. And it hurts um, to drive through my hometown of Blacksburg and see the streets, streets empty. And I cannot imagine the impact that 30,000 students not being here week after week after week. And it just uh, hurts your heart, right? It's sad. And um, 2020 was off to a great booming start. And now we'll all have to reset. Um, but yeah, just keep that eye on the prize that uh, there will be a better day. I was actually talking about Blacksburg with uh, Justin Puente. We did one of these Zoom conversations a couple of days ago, and it's kind of an odd way to look at it, I guess. But for those of us that live in Blacksburg, a lot of what we cherish about it is sometimes that quiet and that safety uh, and almost the retreat aspect to it. Uh, you mentioned getting outdoors. My wife and I are averaging about four, four and a half walks uh, per day <laughs> yeah. when the weather's good right now but we've we've really not that we didn't have an appreciation before we've we've gained almost more so to our surroundings and how natural it is and how safe it feels have you guys felt that as a family yeah absolutely and um in some ways i wish there would be a law about no cell phones either and we could really go throw back to our youth and <laughs> obviously i know the necessity of them but um yeah the purity of being still right and um having that time and slowing down a little bit is, is very, very refreshing. It certainly didn't come from a good circumstance, but uh, you know, the silver lining of that, uh, yeah, maybe good for our psychology and, and health and all that. And certainly with our young people here, you know, the, uh, the campus has done a great job um, with all the planning, all the COVID protocols. Uh, there's some talented people here and um, I really want to commend them for their, their work as well. And, we're all taking care of somebody's sons and daughters. What you always talk about Virginia Tech is the people. And a lot of times you're referencing the student athletes and coaches and the people that work uh, with you in the department, but certainly with the campus at large and the fan base. We're competitive uh, people and obviously we're empathetic people too uh, with a situation like this, want to help in the, in the best way that we possibly can. Um, you know, is there a challenge in, in, in this situation, just like there is in every situation uh, for Virginia Tech to be out front leading uh, in that effort, not only back to the field, but uh, to, to do as much as possible in the interim? Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, at the same time, uh, I really like Dr. Sands' style. He's going to be measured. He's going to take in all of the information. So, I don't know that we have to be, I, I say there's a difference between being bleeding edge and cutting edge. I don't know that we have to be bleeding edge and set the world on fire to be the first ones back. Um, but hopefully athletics can lead the way of uh, people getting back together of uh, that unity and certainly in darker times before at Virginia Tech, athletics has played that role. So we know we're not the most important thing on this campus, but we know we can be uh, perhaps the most important aspect to the healing process once we get back to it. It'll be something to rally around and celebrate. And um, whenever we get to that first tailgate back together, I bet it'll be a good one. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. Actually, I was talking to Fu about that uh, yesterday. You know, we all appreciate how special an environment Lane is, Castle is, Thompson is, uh, when they're rocking. Can you imagine what that's going to feel like? Um, it's being on worship field, being inside Lane Stadium when, when we're back there? Because we will be back there. Yeah. yeah, I think the things we certainly perhaps take for granted will, will mean even more. Unfortunately, human nature will probably forget it after a little bit. But it will be nice to reset and appreciate what we have and, uh, and being back together. But, yeah, we miss that competition. We miss seeing these young people and uh, our fans and all that good stuff. So, uh, yeah, I hope everybody out there is doing all right. We miss you. All right, well, one more serious one, then I've got uh, right. Wits Quarantine Challenge for you. All right, man. Yeah. yeah uh, speed round. Right. <laughs> I've been warming up uh, in anticipation of this. Uh, I kind of glossed over it. I shouldn't have. Like you mentioned, the NCAA yesterday opted uh, to add a year of eligibility for spring sports athletes that had their seasons cut short this year. How yes. will that uh, impact Virginia Tech? Not just Virginia Tech, but uh, institutions. Sure. Yeah, and, and, and again, as I – stated earlier the the NCAA said that all that was permissible and now each school or each conference is trying to figure out 
what they can do, what's the right thing to do for our student athletes. How do we also not, uh, for lack of a better term, log jam our roster where we can't recruit incoming people. Um, I understand why the NCAA did that, but it, um, it really makes it individual decisions with individual student athletes. And we, um, rather than give incorrect information, we've asked our coaches to hold on just a little bit longer till we have our hands around it. But I empathize with those young people. Um, again, it was a long time ago, but I was a college student athlete. Again, I have a child that's one and um, hopefully we can get it figured out soon, you know, but we had a, a lot of students miss opportunities, whether it's graduation, um, their last semester of college. It's just uh, a sad situation. All right, Whit, now uh, time for some quarantine activities. I've challenged myself to try to improve in some areas where I felt like I was lacking, and you know what some of those areas are. But uh, in a limited fashion, culinary, uh, I've tried to add some dishes to what I make. Have you been allowed to prepare any of the meals during this uh, period where you're at home a lot more, or is, uh, is Kelly handling that? Oh, yeah. Um, I like to cook. Uh, Kelly's better at it and seems to enjoy it. I certainly would, would do it. Um, I'm pretty much relegated to the proteins and the grill. You know, that's where I go and me, me and too. the dog and all that kind of stuff. So um, I like cooking uh, on the grill, steaks, ribs, chicken. I've got a um, Shenandoah Valley recipe uh, that they used to have at the volunteer fire department fundraiser. So I've got that from my homeland 100 miles away and I'm planning on doing that this weekend. I found for whatever reason uh, it's oddly reassuring to fall back when it comes to entertainment to some of the classics. Uh, yes. Have you been doing that at all with the boys? I watched Lucas last night. I related yeah. a lot more to Lucas than I would have liked yeah. in that movie. Have, have there been any that you threw on to be like look guys you always say you don't have time you're busy <laughs> you know, you're on your phones so now yeah. I'm gonna sit here and watch this. I, I think I had a little success with Ferris Bueller's day off there and uh, they just don't want to listen to wisdom you know I don't know what the deal is but I do hammer them with uh, Michael Jordan being the man and we will all watch that 30 for 30 or, or, or the series coming up and uh, I will hear no other uh, arguments against it and that's not allowed in my house so whenever that's on I'm like y'all come watch a real baller and how they used to play. <laughs> Have you been finding a way as coach Fuente instructed uh, for home workouts? Um, yes I, I hopefully I'm doing okay on that you know and again I can get it working outside um, some cardio stuff I'm not much of a power lifter as you can tell Lays, but yeah I'm trying to do that <laughs> and uh, I do get to fish a little bit and golf a little bit um, but really still very, very busy with Zoom calls and things. But uh, the longer this goes on, I think we'll have to fill up a little bit more free time. But uh, we're working hard, everybody, uh, to make all the Hokies proud, still try to keep uh, moving forward. All right, this is how I close all of my Zoom calls, whether it's professional meeting or uh, interviews such as this. Tiger King, have you seen it? <laughs> I watched a little bit of that, and I thought, man, I cannot believe I'm watching this. So Kelly had it on. I got sucked in for about 30 minutes and then I, I've just heard everybody else talk about that one. But no, I'm not uh, not on that one yet. All the way. Well, we'll check back with you in a couple of weeks and we'll have expected you to complete that homework assignment. <laughs> hey, man, I'll get on it. You're right. Wait, Thanks, stay safe, Steve. my man. It's really nice to talk to you. Have a great day. Yeah, you too. Go Hokies.